just we're gonna record this hey everybody uh it's alex sorta here with wordpress toronto's let's fix your wordpress website meetup for june 16th this is our fourth virtual meetup uh we're, we're getting into the um the the hang of these uh meetups now and uh it seems to be people are uh, finding this and we have some new people join today which is nice as well the way that this meetup works is that we um have a bunch of questions that have been posted on the meetup group. I didn't actually see that many this this uh, um, month, but um, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take questions probably from the audience. I have I see actually a few here, but we normally answer questions from folks that are actually in the meetup group, or, or sorry, that have actually posted uh, questions. And I'm gonna share my screen shortly here, and we'll start working through these. And uh, the way that works is we kind of try to help each other with the questions that you have that have been posted. And then once we run out of questions on the meetup group, then we go to take questions from the room um, and uh, try to address them one by one. And of course, we're, you know, if you have something that you'd like to add or it's very free flowing, so it's not like a really straight agenda, but uh, I wanted to mention um, at the beginning of the meeting, um, uh, that we have a couple of sponsors. We have a sponsor named the Canadian Management Consortium, which provides uh, support for our Zoom meetings. Um, they've provided three months worth of uh, uh, Zoom support for us, which is great. Thank you for that. Um, and then I don't have it in our write-up this uh, this month, but uh, we also have, uh, I'm actually blocking the, uh, I'm gonna get out of the way here a little bit. We have a sponsorship from how am I gonna do this actually? Uh, from Weglot, and as my microphone is blocking that. So Weglot is a translation service, which is I'm, I'm going to uh, talk about a little bit at the beginning of this meetup, since they did actually come back and are supporting a year's worth of our WordPress Toronto meetups. So I'm gonna bring up uh, uh, Weglot here real quick and talk a little bit about it before we start. Um, more people joining here. So Weglot is a really cool service. I'm sharing my screen now, so you should be able to see it. Um, Weglot is um, um, a service that allows you to translate your website into one of probably 70 or 80 different languages really, really easily. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like in operation on the WordPress Toronto site. Um, basically, this is the WordPress site, and if you wanted to switch into one of these, any one of these other languages, let's say you wanted to, you're, let's say you're reading a page here and you want to read this in Russian, it will automatically take um, this page and convert it into Russian on the fly for you. And there is uh, absolutely no um, uh, translation stored inside of your WordPress site. So it converts um, the, the content of the site, any captions. It doesn't convert pictures yet uh, or text and pictures, although I think they're working on that. And it actually um, does a very good job of converting um, the text, but not necessarily the, um, the formatting. And um, it will also convert your menus. It will convert any forms that you have, any embed widgets. It's really, really cool. The way it works is that it takes and basically dynamically, there's a piece of JavaScript that dynamically reads all of the various elements that have text in them, sends them to Weglot. Weglot does a machine language translation through one of several uh, online translation services, including Microsoft Translator, uh, Google's Translator, it's one called Deepol. I think they have three or four different translators and they, and they send your text to, for translation and then it actually um, drives it back to the site. And so they build a dictionary dynamically of all the content on your site in whatever language that you want. Um, and there is, there's, there's really very little actually that is uh, on your uh, uh, WordPress site, meaning that there is no like, you're not maintaining like a whole list of translations. You can install this in a few minutes and have your site be dynamically translated with all the translation services there. So I'm gonna log into the dashboard so you can kind of see 
what the result of this looks like. Um, you have complete control over your translations and, you, and with one account, you can actually set up multiple websites if you want, and you can support as many languages as you want in it. Um, and I'll talk about a little bit of how it's priced. Um, so what happens here is that here we've got a bunch of projects. So I have a little sandbox site. I have my own website. I have another Word Wild Apricot site I was trying this out with because it supports uh, just about any technology. It doesn't have to be uh, WordPress, but they do have a WordPress plugin. So this is the WordPress Toronto project. And you can see we have um, we have several languages supported and you can see all the, all the words that have been already translated into all these languages. So you can basically, if you wanted to add another language to the site, for translations, you just select which language you want. And uh, let's say we wanted to check and I click add language and I add a check now to the site. And when I go and refresh this page, I, don't think I need to refresh it, I think. Um, you'll see that, um, uh, let's see here. Let me look at this site here. See if this is actually working. I might have to log into the, um, eh, no, actually I'm on the Russian site. Let me just switch to the English and I'll log into the WP admin and see if, um, look into the plugin here. And let's look at the Weglot plugin. This is the plugin for WordPress that uh, actually supports this functionality. So yeah, actually I have a check added automatically. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, so it's added here. Not quite sure why the website is not showing that new language. There it is. Okay, it took a little while. So there's there's, there's check, and so now. Uh, all of these pages now and the forms and everything can now be translated into, into uh, a new language. So, um, and that is how easy it is to add and remove languages to a website. And if you want, if you don't want to keep a, lang a, a language, you can just delete the translation dictionary. One of the things that's really cool about this system is it also allows you to look at all the translations. So for example, if you wanted to take a look at all the various different websites that you have on your, or sorry, translations that you have, you can go and override them. So if there's something that you don't like, you can go ahead and actually change it in line and it will automatically save that in the dictionary of all the translations. You can also look by particular pages. So if you want to look at a particular page, you can see on this page what translations have been made and you can change them. Or you can, or you can do this kind of uh, cross uh, the whole website. So for example, if we're looking at one of our, um, one of our blog posts here, we can actually see all the translations that were made automatically and you can override them if you like. Um, so the, the process of translations is very different. Instead of having to go and do translations, you have the system do translations automatically for you. And then you can go in and check and adjust certain things that you don't want. The final thing I wanted to show real quick is that there is a way to create, um, uh, kind of a glossary and you can specify translation rules and say, for example, I never want to translate this word in all, in all uh, language pairs. Similarly, I can say, uh, you know, like WP Toronto, don't translate that so that that never translates or never tra translate the word WordPress. And you can build these different translation rules for specific languages or for all languages that you're supporting on your site. WP Toronto is another type of thing like this that I may not. Uh, oh, actually, I already have that. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, I have that. Uh, so, uh, let's, uh, oh, yeah, I may, I might want to translate the word Toronto, but not the word, the word WordPress, for example. So, um, it's there's a lot more features that are this product has, but it's really kind of a very different way of doing uh, uh, translations now. Um, because you're saving time in translations and also saving so much time in, um, in all your various different um, um, the work that you may actually have to do when you do translation, because you're literally just kind of adding a language and letting the system take care of everything by itself. The pricing is done on a monthly basis, based on how many words um, you have in your website. So if you have, for example, um, let's see here, they have a plan for 
uh, 99 euros per year, you get 10,000 words in one language. So for 190 euros a year, you get three languages and 50,000 words. 50,000 words is a fairly standard uh, small business website. And so you, and uh, remember that if you have three languages, that's probably about 14, now about 13 to 14,000 words per language. So it's not, um, it, it isn't uh, 50,000 words per language is total. So you can use up to three languages. Um, and then goes on from there. So it saves you quite a bit of time. So if, if, if you want to have multiple customers, if you have customers that are in different languages and you really need them to be able to access your system in different languages, or if it's an e-commerce site and you want to have people chop for, uh, with you in anything other than, other than English, it's a really great solution. Um, uh, I see a couple of uh, notes here. Um, uh, I also teach English in China over the internet and English is the universal language of business. That's true. English is the universal language of business, I guess. Um, but uh, for example, in, in WordPress Toronto, we may have uh, customer uh, or potential new newcomers to Toronto that don't speak English, but maybe we want to learn English and they want to learn a little bit about where we have our meetups and stuff like that. So being, uh, we try, we were translating in the top languages in Toronto. So, you know, sometimes it's nice to have some support in a different language. And in certain, certain cases, if you have a e-commerce site, for example, and you want to sell to other audiences, you might really want to have a completely uh, dynamically translated website so you, don't, so you don't have to maintain all the translations. So it's, uh, it's a pretty cool system. Um, does anybody have any questions about it before we start going to the questions? Uh, I have a question. Uh, I was just wondering if uh, you can exclude a page like your blog page yeah. from the word count. Uh, yeah, you can actually create exclusions of any kind. You can um, you can go and say either by word, like I showed you in the glossary, or you can create all kinds of other rules. Uh, so um, you can um, uh, you can do translation. So this is a translation. In ex you can exclude URLs. Uh, you can exclude specific CSS blocks as well. So you could say I want to exclude. Um, a particular page that has a particular URL slug, or you can have starts with, so you can have like a whole sub structure. Of, so you can actually target the translations as to where they're available. Uh, mm -hmm. You can have reg regular expression rules. So you can do those kind of exclusions too. That's perfect. Yeah. So feel free to, uh, if you're interested in this, uh, you can you can sign up for free and give it a try. and. Um, if you're interested in getting a discount, let let, it, let me know, and uh, um, uh, we'll we'll provide you um, some. This, uh, there's a code that they have available that you can use to sign up for a discount. Um, and um, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of really neat uh, uh, kind of features that this product has. So this is a very quick demo of uh, of Weglot, which is a company in Paris, France. Actually, they're they're in Europe. So, Do you need um, to pay per website, or if you have two or three sites that you, uh, you know, have small usage? It's just it's number of total number of words, total number of translations. So it doesn't matter how many sites you have. So it's just a question of how many languages you want and how many words. So they they tier it based on number of languages and words total. So all, different all URLs are all included. By default, yeah, but you can actually say I wanted to exclude. So you can say I have these three websites and I only want to translate the homepage, for example, of each site if you want. But then you can do that. Yeah, you can manage that. Yeah. Beautiful. Sorry, somebody said Elsa had something. Uh, that's it. Okay. Um, all right. So. Um, let Sorry, just a quick question about this translation. Um, oh. Can you add a message to the translated page saying that this is automatically translated? You know, because some languages, the translation could be not 100% accurate. You can just put that right in the, uh, you can put that right in the website content, right? So like you oh. could put, you could put like in a footer or the header and say translations are provided by a machine language okay. translation in English, and then when you translate it, it'll translate that into a different language. Or oh, you could actually, okay. you know, hard code a particular, like I saw in the dictionary, in the translations, you can you can specify a particular translation to be a very 
particular um, you could like, normally what you do is you're reviewing these translations. So like you, you can have a translator review all the translations and say, is this correct? Or you can, this is a place to find uh, certain kind of words that you don't want automatically translated. Or if you want, you can delete a translation. So for example, I don't want this to be translated. So if I want, if I know I'm not translating this word, I can just delete it from the dictionary. And, um, and, and uh, it, since it's a stop word now, it won't ever be translated again because I don't want it actually translated. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, you could, you have a lot of control over this. See, here's 235 pages of translations. You can also export and import translations too. Uh, you can, you can, you can see them in um, the raw HTML view or the styled view. Um, and, and you can check and you can also search. So like if you wanted to, uh, to look to see where the word Toronto is inside of our website. So you can see where it is right here. And um, you can see all the various different um, so, translations. So now you are logged into their dashboard. Is this like a plugin you can put it on your website? Yeah, or yeah you get it. You when you sign up, you get your own dashboard, and you download the WordPress plugin to install on your WordPress site. Yeah, okay. WordPress plugin is free. You pay for the translation service. Oh, okay. Good. This is this is a this is what the dashboard looks like when you register for an account. Okay. okay. Cool. All right, so let's move on. Um, I wanted to make sure they, they I want to make sure they get some visibility in this because they're uh, sponsoring our so I hope you don't mind that little plug for them, but they're they're sponsoring us doing all this work and recording and doing zoom and and when we go back in person, hopefully that will happen again sometime soon. they'll sponsor our food and pizza and stuff like that at our at our location. so we want to make sure that they get a lot of love during our meetups. Um, okay, let's take a look at some of the questions. I have three people that said they could make it. We'll start with, um, let's see. Yeah, Leslie. Leslie, um, we talked a little bit um, on the phone. Do you want to uh, talk a little bit about your challenges and what you'd like us to talk about? You there, Leslie? Yeah, hi, Alex. Oh, hey. Yeah, first of all, I have to say thank you again, Alex, for um, getting back to me so quick so I could attend today. Um, I am a graphic designer. I do not do um, coding or going to the back end of websites. So I'm working on a website for a client right now that requires me to use a WordPress. And I'm essentially at a very beginner level. I've been able to um, sort of general tasks, but there are certain tasks concerning um, WooCommerce customization that I, I, I can't sort of <clears throat> So I was hoping that I would be able to get some assistance with that today. Uh, specifically, it's, it is, I, I have used the, my client has used a Woo, WooCommerce plugin in her website. And I want to, which was previously built, I am refining the website. So I want to know how to, how do I change, like say text settings or font settings, um, okay. any kind of settings, um, how do I go into the back end? Yeah, that's, well, that's, a, that's a good generic question. And Leslie, you're not able to share your, uh, your client as well. So we're not really able to log in and take a look at what. Uh, what I, I can, yeah, because I can try and do a share screen. I'm. Oh, okay. You want to, remember, we're recording this, so whatever is being shared is also going to be recorded. So. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. That, that's so, so let's so let's talk let's talk in generalities here, and and okay. um, this is the kind of question we get pretty much in every single meetup. Um, okay. Frankly, like because you would think like with WordPress, it would be like pretty easy to change text, font, and image settings. But the reality is that depending on how a WordPress site is particularly implemented and what kind of plugins are being used. Mm -hmm. and and what sort of themes are being used and are you using gutenberg or are you using a page builder or are you using the classic editor they, wow. there is no set answer to your question They're like there isn't a way that anybody could basically say go here here and here and you'll be able to change the text font and image settings there's some general things we could do like for example you could change general text settings with css but then your your theme might have a a way to change text settings and frankly, it's really without actually looking at a particular implementation and come almost kind of doing a diagnostic of where things are changed, it's impossible to answer this question. And this is actually one of the things that's probably all of you have as a challenge. Like if I were to go to your website, like if I were to go 
to this website here and asked you, well, how do I change the color of this button here? Well, that's probably a widget. So I may actually go into the widget and see if there's some information about this button, but I may not find the color of that background of that button inside the widget. Um, like, I, let's just, just, just for, for fun, let's just see if, if actually, if the color of that widget is actually in somewhere inside of uh, the, the widgets here, the sidebar widgets. So this is a text. Uh, and in this case, it actually is. So that's nice. The background is right there. So I can change the color of that, of that widget here because it's actually in CSS, right? So like if I were to try to change it with this, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I'd have to go into the text of this because this happened to be a text widget that is, that is put in. That's not always the case though, right? And, and again, this, just because I can change it like this here doesn't mean that that's the way I'm gonna be able to change uh, another widget. So for example, the Weegla Translate this, uh, that little, uh, that little switcher that's here. Well, that's controlled by that Weeglot plugin. So that's actually all the design of this is changed primarily in the dashboard where you can specify various settings or is changed in the plugin. So if you go in here, you can actually make some changes in the Weeglot. Uh, Weegl so you can actually make, um, you can do a little bit of like, you could, you could override the CSS and make some changes to it. And, so select a few options in previous. So you can see that's very, very kind of very specific as to where a particular kind of font or image color or something is changed. And so therefore it's, it's one of those things that has to be well documented. Does anybody else have any insight as to this general question? Like how do I change text font and image settings? Yeah, Alex, uh, Dan here. Um, I think that uh, it there are a few levels. That, as you said, it, it can be very specific and very inconsistent uh, as to the places where you change these design uh, options. Uh, but if you start off with a theme that has um, a feature list of things that you can update, like typography, uh, colors, uh, background uh, colors and images. So it's worth looking there. And the bonus that if you use that, uh, those uh, features for, for that theme, so once you change in one place, it'll probably change in all the places on the site. So you don't have to go through all the buttons in the site. If you want to change them from red to blue, you would do it in one place. Depending on the theme, it could be through the WordPress customizer or through uh, the the actual themes uh, uh, control panel if it if it installs one in, in your WordPress site. So the first place to look for would be the actual theme that you have installed, the active theme. Uh, after that, you you know it's kind of going down the rabbit hole of specifically looking for a button or going down to CSS. Depends on the change that you want to do. So that's, that's like a, so, so Leslie, um, and then the, the next question is what are the steps to making a pop-up visible in a draft? Uh, you well, mean like uh, a pop-up on a, on a web page, or when you say draft, what do you mean by draft? Well, uh, a draft page. So, so I don't want the pop-up to be visible on the live site, but just, just so that I'm, I'm able to show it on the, on a draft page. Oh, to be able to, to experiment with it. You have to make a, you can probably make a private page so it doesn't show up on the website. And then you can test it in, in, uh, in, uh, in administrative mode without it being on the site. There's a way to create st the status of a page. It can be uh, a private page. You can experiment. I sometimes, I've, I've made a, just a new page with the, just copied, made a page and uh -huh. that isn't listed anywhere. <laughs> and they sent a link to the person who say, go take a look at it here. Yeah. It wouldn't oh. be on the navigation. It wouldn't be anywhere, you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah, can they can just too. go and do that and then. Yeah, so I, there's a private option for uh, when you do a quick edit on a page. You, you can make a page private. private. You okay. can if it's in draft, only you will see it once you're an admin or an editor. So, and uh -huh. it won't be listed on the web. 
can you can, when you when, when something's in draft can you can you do a preview on it yeah i guess you can yeah yeah yes yes okay so yeah so you can even keep it in draft you don't need to do it in private but if you if you want to show it to your customer without them logging in mm -hmm. then you would need yeah, to either... then, then yeah then you could either publish it with a long name like like dale said like with a random character so no one will by accident see it and also if you have a like a seo plugin you would say no follow and no that they won't be listed on google so you, okay. want, you don't want that page to be indexed um and then you can send it to the client and he can experience that page okay thank you now leslie i know you said you wanted to get some help we have some people in the chat here that are offering some suggestions um uh, so uh do you want to talk a little bit about your contact information and how Sure. You might want to you want to want to share that in chat if somebody wants to offer their help to you after um, this meeting that you could do in one of a one on one connection with somebody. Okay, sure. Yeah, thanks. I'll, I'll type that in right now. Okay. okay. Yeah, you can bring you can bring up the chat under the little uh, three meatballs there under the more, and or you can hit Alt H or Control H to bring up chat, and okay. you'll see all the chat. You can send it to a particular person in the meeting, or you can uh, send it to everyone. Uh, so I see the Kapil there's uh, offering his email address and providing support and uh, um, yeah so there's a, there's a bunch of uh, oh uh, okay uh, quest for knowledge Inc raised their hand okay okay what would you like to say Well, what, well what, I, what, I'll, what I'll put in the chat is I'll just leave my contact information for anyone who is, um, will be interested in maybe being able to help me one-on-one -on -one, uh, tomorrow. I, I'd be willing to give you something for your time. So I'll, I'll leave my information in the chat and, I, and, I'll, and I'll look at, I guess, whoever responds because I, I don't want to take up uh, too much of, of the meeting with that as well. But, but thank you for, for anybody who does offer and for those who have offered their suggestions so far yeah i see a quest for knowledge inc I, are you uh offering a quick you raise your hand there no sorry um i have a question actually oh okay yeah we'll get we'll get to it i, I saw it actually in the in the chat here we're going to do the stuff that's the first on the meetup uh on the on the meetup group and then after that i will uh switch to the chat session okay okay thank you that's normally what we do Okay, so we have Kai Smash here. Um, uh, later, okay, so with the latest make WordPress core update from Google. Okay, so you're talking about Google's uh, algorithm got updated, right, Kai? Yes, yes. Um, sorry, maybe I didn't mention that I'm talking here within the context of WordPress. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure most people know about Yoast and some other tools. So, um, so many that's what I hear from many people. So many people get affected by this latest uh, update by Google. Some of them oh. in, in a good way and some of them in a bad way. Oh. And mainly in a bad way. So many websites lost uh, traffic, lost uh, indexing. Uh, there were uh, so many articles. Even uh, I heard even New York Times, even LinkedIn. Uh, some they have they had some articles, some pages get dropped from oh. the indexing. Um, so just well, I uh, just want to share my experience. Uh, I had uh, I, I used to use uh, Yoast, and recently I switched to Rank Math, uh, which I find it quite a bit uh, better than. Uh, yours in terms of how you can control uh, stuff, how can you it, it even evaluate your uh, content, uh, like the keywords you are using. So I'm not sure what you guys like to experience. It's not a specific question, uh, but just to see what people face with this uh, change and if you ever uh, work on something to fix it or the approach. Anybody have some feedback for Kais? Mm. 
I, you know, I don't know where to really start with something like that. It's so unique for everybody. I think the more traffic that you're used to getting, and if you see, see a drop off in traffic, sometimes it's seasonal, but so you got to really kind of con, 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 con sort of compare apples to apples and see like what happened. If you lost like 50% of your traffic or something like that, then mm-hmm. obviously that's probably not seasonal, but, um, but so there's a question of how much traffic you lost and like, and whether that's statistically significant or, and can be blamed on this particular plugin or not. Right. Or this, uh, this, this indexing algorithm. Yeah. Um, some, some people in some groups of the like social media, like Twitter, Facebook, they were talking about pages that were indexed and suddenly it get dropped. Uh, like when they check it through, uh, the webmaster tools, Google webmaster tools, it, uh-huh. uh, it shows it's not even indexed. <laughs> oh, so they were like blocked or something. Yeah, like suddenly. <laughs> so, there must be some penalty. Sorry? I am saying that there must be some penalty related to webmaster have deleted it from the Google no, no, not a penalty in terms of the whole website penalty. Um, like some, just some pages get dropped from the index. Okay. <coughs> you can re-invite the crawler and index for your website. Uh, invite what, sorry? I'm saying that you can re-invite the crawler and indexer to your website via the webmaster tool. Yeah. So you can put the link in Twitter or uh, Reddit. They make the website uh, very much fast indexable uh-huh. or you can have a check at, at your plugin which you are using for SEO that have not um, misconfigured any file yeah i'm using there, uh, the rank math rank math plugin hmm. yeah. there can be many issues you need to just troubleshoot two or three to get what is the exactly right issue yeah like I'm saying that there can be issue with your plugin or there, there can be issue with the uh, webmaster. You can re-invite webmaster to your website okay. or, or to a specific page. It hardly okay. matters. Anybody else have an experience with a decrease in traffic? I don't know if people here are following the traffic on their websites or uh, what's the volume of traffic they are getting, if they notice any difference. Mm, I guess not. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe some people are not monitoring. I mean, I've I've seen a a general seasonal decrease. uh, And also I've I've noticed... uh, some you know it's less from less but but like like year over year i have i see an increase so it kind of all depends really yeah right? that's the general trend usually like there are so many well, factors if you're uh, if you're, if you're actively you know driving people to your site and uh um now if you were trying to do some kind of search engine optimization that's not being like that's not in favor right now you may have actually stumbled onto some, so using something that Google doesn't approve anymore. And so you may be getting penalized, right? So um, are you- Yeah, using- some people um, like, again, this algorithm is not something uh, uh, public where everyone knows how this works. It's always a, a secret by Google. So, um, but most of the people now are suggesting about the content. So people, uh, Google now looks into the content of your website. Right. Is it, is it meant to be like beneficial, readable, uh, has some value for the data and not like an, a, a robot automated text mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. just to fill something. Uh, so that's one of the things uh, which Google are now looking at. Oh yeah. Well, they've been doing that for a while now. It's not It's not new that they've been doing that. So they've been doing Yeah, that. yeah. But I guess now they are focusing more on this uh, ah. to evaluate the website. That's possible, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they, they it's, a, it's a black art kind of. Sorry. Did I interrupt someone? 
I was going to say it's kind of a black card, to be honest with you, like trying to get Google to, to uh, increase traffic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we'll go on to some. Sorry, is there somebody trying to say something? There's a feedback from my my speaking. It's weird. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of feedback from when I, when I'm talking. I'm not sure why. Um, let's see here. So I'm gonna go to the group chat, and uh, let's see here. Um, Amy. Amy. Um, so let's see here. Um, you said you had a host Papa site trying to make a corporate site allows businesses to book and prepay for team building murder mystery events. I'm not sure how to do it. Okay. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Maybe. I think you're muted. There we go. There you are. <laughs> now yeah. you can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Basically what I'm trying to do is create a site with like a booking calendar that links for them to be able to pay for it because I'm creating like original murder mystery events. And one of the things I'm trying to create is uh, team building events that companies can use. And it's all over the internet. So it's not affected by viruses or anything else. Okay. Um, and it's all original. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways to for people to book and prepay for events. Um, you could do it with a form with a simple form. Do you have some kind of inventory or some sort of like a, no, schedule? it's all, it's all virtual things. Like I said, I'm trying to my, do you mind if I share the site because it might yeah. help sure. to make it easier to sure thing to see what's going on kind of thing. Uh, where is it now? There we go. This is what I've got. All right. And basically it can go into different apps, but it doesn't seem to make much sense from um, what I can tell. This is, a, this is your hosting site. This is not, yeah. you're navigating to your WordPress site now. Okay. Okay. But the WordPress site doesn't seem to let me do anything. Uh, well, That's where I'm getting confused. Oh, well, it looks like it's installed. Uh, you can click on admin. To go All this to does WordPress is install admin. WordPress somewhere on your account. Right. And, and that's it. You still have to go and do everything you know, to configure and set up the WordPress site itself right. once you've selected where it's going to go. Right. So this is now you're logging into the administrative module but this looks like a fresh oh. wordpress site yeah okay this looks different okay so you you were you installed wordpress on your hosting host papa account using that stuffedaculus system but this is the administrative portal of your site so this is where you put content in install plugins install themes and do everything to maintain your website Okay, so this is where I can kind of make everything happen. Yeah, exactly. So if you see where it says my blog at the top left. I really don't want to blog. No, it's just called my blog, but it's blog is, it's, but that's actually linked to your website. So you can see what it looks like right now. So where, right. It says, where it says my blog at the top, there's a, uh, just, just above the dashboard, uh, there's a little house. Yes, I see that. So you click on that, that'll visit your right. website. And then there's not way. much to the site right now. I don't think. Well, I, yeah, I, re I realize that, but I'm just showing you that that's actually what the site looks Here's like what, with the theme that's installed. That's what you want to work with. Yeah, that's right. So that's actually what it's currently running. And, and you, any changes you make to the, in the administrator, like applying a new theme or adding content or creating everything, then you uh, will be able to make those changes. So like right now this okay. is called WEN Associates. So here are all the various themes that are installed on your site. So Alex, she she did install the site and this is what we're looking at now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just now, ask oh, there's more themes on WordPress. There are, there are over 10,000 different themes out there. Oh, wow. Okay. Now I know where I'm going wrong. <laughs> You're not going wrong. You just didn't actually uh, continue through... Uh, 
through the sort of process of you install the site and your host, the, the code in the database. And now you're actually inside of, you might want to bookmark the WP admin URL uh, so that you can get to it very quickly again. Yeah, I think so. And, and, you, and you probably have a username and password too that you might want to reset. Okay. So if you want so to- So I just, should be able to find a theme here that does what I want it to do basically. The, the theme is going to be the way it looks. Right. The theme is not going to be necessarily the booking feature. Although you, there might be a theme that has a plugin for doing booking. Does anybody have uh, suggestions of how to create a, um, a, a booking? Is, 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 is there timing involved in yours or just kind of like a form? where they? No, no, I'm looking for an actual calendar type thing where they can book specific times, dates. Okay, so it ties to your- it's, But it's booking an event uh, or uh, it's, in effect a webinar, right? Appointments um, actually. Appointments, yeah. Okay, well, did you pay for appointments? Yes. Yeah. Um, does it, is the calendar going to be driven inside of WordPress or is it going to be tied to your Google Calendar or something like that? Um, as long as it's something that allows people to prepay for the, the appointments, it doesn't really matter. Wow, so there's just like a lot of, okay, well, there's a lot of options that will allow you to do probably both. So, um, uh, there is a plugin directory of, of, of appointments um, of various different ways to book appointments. <clears throat> you have to experiment and see which one you, you think you might want to use. I think even WooCommerce has a, um, a bo appointment booking e-commerce functionality as well. WooCommerce? Yeah, that's not a theme though. That's a plugin. Oh, okay. I think WordPress Is that a paid plugin or? WooCommerce has paid options, but it's free as a starting point. You can also look at Calendly and integrate it with Stripe. So Calendly is a platform for getting appointments. Mm -hmm. And you can integrate it with Stripe, which is a gateway for credit cards. And then pull that into your website. That's another option. Oh. So right, just write down these keywords, Calendly and Stripe. But they're like Alex says, there are probably a hundred different solutions for your yeah for your problem. Too wide, in fact. Oh. You just have to like dig a bit more, do some research, and see what the best solution <clears throat> in terms of complexity, in terms of cost. Yeah, there's there's a lot of options for doing what you're doing. So it could be a simple form, like a contact form. It won't let you do appointments, though. I don't think. But at least you can say what date and time you want. And if, if you don't have a lot of, uh, if you think you're not going to have a huge amount of demand, you may not want to over-engineer it from the beginning. You may, um, you may want to just have a simple form and you have like a, a field to say what's your preferred and alternate date and time. And so you have, you fill out the form and then the form could uh, collect credit card information and send that to, to Stripe, for example. Um, but you, you might want to think about how the environment, how that's all going to work. Is somebody going to want to book a time and then you confirm with them and then maybe you take your payment or do you want them to pay up front? No, it, they should be paying for it up front. Yeah. So, so like simple forms will allow you to do it. Like, uh, like something like contact form seven or ninja forms or gravity forms. They all have ability to create a form on your WordPress site. Those are plugins. Those aren't themes. Uh, themes are the way the, the site looks and feels, and plugins are the fun functionality. Yeah, and okay. like the fee for uh, services rendered or uh, appointment made. Yep. Those are, are those plugins, Jock? Uh, yeah. or, or, or... So this is so this is the theme area. I'll show you where the plugins are. There's another question here about. Uh, what's the best method of installing WooCommerce on WordPress? Well, look, you can actually kind of go through that. Uh, we won't install it, okay. but I can show you. So WooCommerce is an e-commerce system. So if you if you cl uh, close this, um, if you, if you click the X in the upper left corner there and close this uh, theme customizer, you'll go back to the dashboard. And um, installing a plugin is as simple as going under plugins, where it says plugins on the left. And try uh, Dan's calendar. Uh, yeah, well, you can do that. You can begin installing plugins. So, um, you, the, like, if you want to install, um, oh, 
these are required plugins. No, no, I don't. No, we don't want to do that. Uh, that that's for your theme that you're using. Don't I wouldn't install those yet. Go on, go under. Um, just go just on the left side where it says plugins under appearance. There's okay. um yeah there you go. So this is your plugin manager where you install and deinstall plugins. So if you want to add a WooCommerce for example, which is a e-commerce system, uh, the pot that has you know most likely a way to book events, you could. Uh, so like this. Uh, yeah, and you could type in WooCommerce in the search plugins page, and um, um, under key, where it says keyword search plugins, you could type. Um, or you can tell, you can do the popular. There's a, a, a contact form seven. And there's WooCommerce right there, so like you can install it from right there. So, um, oh. oh, okay. Um, oh, sorry. Actually, I, I misunderstood that. I thought that was your question. I was you're talking about Excite Media's question. Okay. Dan sh shared in the uh, chat a Calendly plus Stripe integration. So that's uh, Calendly is a separate service. That's not a WordPress service per se, but um, I, it's spelled with one L. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's like calendar, Calendly. Um, yeah, that, that's a separate service that you have to subscribe to and then you install. Okay. Uh, and, and then you install on your site. So that is a, that, I think there's a free version of it, uh, but I'm not sure if the, uh, the Stripe integration is free or not. Um, but that's, that's a separate one. I, I, you know, I would, does anybody have any other recommendations of how to, how to get this, how to get something like this going? Yes, yeah, am I audible? Yeah. Uh, he or she can use a plugin which use WooCommerce as a payment gateway. Then mm -hmm. in WooCommerce, they can use any payment gateway, PayPal, Stripe, PayU, whichever they like. Oh, and can that link to like scheduling or? Yeah, it is easy. You just have to find a plugin which uses WooCommerce as a payment gateway. Okay. And then using WooCommerce, you can access any payment gateway you want. Mostly payment gateways are available in WooCommerce. Free of cost. But WooCommerce is almost overkill. There's so much to uh, uh, cut away before you get to the uh, membership and uh, calendaring uh, capability. Yeah, it's it's got a lot of uh, capability for sure. If you want, so you could take an approach that's more like what Jock's suggesting. Uh, he, he, for, he shared a link in the chat of a uh, list of calendar plugins. Um, oh. If you want to check, check the chat window, there's yeah, a... Yeah, uh, the chat. There's okay. a list of... Uh, uh, it's my favorite place to go, 18 to find out a good uh, calendar uh, widget or uh, plugins. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a good description of uh, the best. Plugins kind of come in like f different flavors. There's one generic things like a forms builder that'll just collect some information, sends an email, it could take a payment. And then there's more specific ones that will allow you to like, like for example, show a calendar and then allow booking. So that's, that's not a forms plugin. That's more of like what a- uh, um, Like an appointment. Yeah, booking. an appointment setting. And then Dan shared a WooCommerce a bookings extension, which probably is commercial, but it's an extension to WooCommerce. Yeah, that co that costs one hundred forty nine dollars a year. That does lets you do bookings, and it has a lot of flexibility for creating all kinds of various different appointments and stuff. So there's a there's a lot of options for doing something like this, and it's like you kind of want to evaluate what is right for you and what you think is best but you expect to spend more than a few hours setting something like this up to get it to work yeah i think so the way that you want it to work so but that's awesome thank you okay there's uh, so many options you really have to uh, uh, define what you want to do and based on that then some uh, uh, membership or calendar plugins will start to pull out yeah no 
I had one called Quick Contact and it came with an event thing and it was simple and you didn't have to go to school. <clears throat> and I used it for years only unfortunately they've split and someone now has taken over one part of it or another. Uh -uh. So I was going to recommend it, but <clears throat> I don't know what's happened in the last couple of weeks. Things happen fast when they decide to do that. Mm. But it's breaking my heart because <clears throat> it was yeah. just easy and too good. And it did everything you could want. Mm. And if you had to pay, you might have paid a whole $20. Hmm. Well, I, not too bad. On, my, my name is Campbell. I'm frugal. <laughs> yeah. Well, is it still a plug-in in the directory? <clears throat> yeah. Oops, there you are. Okay. Well, I'm, I just, I don't know if you noticed, I disappeared for a while. Yeah, what happened? My, there? my, don't, I don't know. I was, everything was fine. And all of a sudden I was trying to get back to <clears throat> your, the thing, my whole screen was covered. And the next thing you know, it died on me. My computer just went down. Oh. So I had to restart it, do it all again, and then try to figure out how to get back in here. Because <laughs> I've never had that happen before. You're back. Yeah, I know. I know. It's terrifying, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now you're back. You're good. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the chat here. So lots of options there. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Um, uh, so, Azar, do you want to ask your question? You say you've been exploring <clears throat> teaching online can you recommend an organization to get started oh um thanks uh, thanks very much and i was actually uh, somebody mentioned something about when you were speaking about um wig lot i was just kind of asking a side question um, and uh, somebody was very kind uh, to provide some information of a service that they're using so um thank you to um, quest for knowledge who has been teaching online <laughs> for five years now and um, she has recommended uh, this uh, this company, so uh, I will explore that. It was more of a side issue where we spoke about translation and teaching, etc. Oh, okay. Nothing related to nothing related to WordPress, but uh, well, anyway, good. a great resource. Anyway, that's good to find. Uh, so that's you, Amy, right? You, you yeah. Mentioned. What What do you teach on VIPKid.com? I teach English in China wow. over the internet, <clears throat> and, and uh, now I'm designing my own stuff. Mm -hmm. So I also teach uh, courses on out school and event, and I do murder mystery night events on Game Maker. Hmm. Well, that's cool. So it's an online educate, uh, it's an online uh, education system. Wow, that's really neat. I'll be sure to use your <clears throat> referral code so that you get the benefit if I do register. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad you guys were able to connect on that. Um, I found it. It's quick contacts or quick events. Quick contact. Is it is it still a plugin that you can get? No, they still got the plugins there. Quick event manager. Sorry, that was one of them. That's the one that's now being controlled by Fullworks. If they keep it the same, then it's good. I've used it. I've used it for years. Sometimes people have wanted to yeah. just quick contact. It's a contact form that you don't have. It's so simple and it works. Yeah, there's one called quick quick event manager. I'll put it in the chat. It's not, you know, I, I, now that's been taken over by Fullworks, but the, the fellow who done it, he's done it this for free, this quick contact for years, I believe he's in England. And he'll even, he'll even talk to you, you can contact him and yeah, I know. Okay. That's <laughs> now cool. he's got one that might cost you a whole $15 to get. <laughs> well, I think there's a, uh, uh, there's a free version, I think. Oh yeah. Um, but if you go for the pro, it, it doesn't, kind of, it's just, come on, I like that. <laughs> and yeah. it just worked. Okay. Yeah. And it's made by a company called Fullworks. Now that's um, the, that's the event manager. I think the other one has still got the same fellow in England. Okay. He just, he's still doing, cause I, I emailed and said, what are you doing to me? <laughs> that one is called quick, quick, uh, contact form. Oh, okay. A con it's a contact form. Okay. Yeah. I know. And it's a nice, simple little one that, that d does a lot of different things. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. So I'm not sure if everybody knows. Uh, the chat can be saved. Yeah, it'll save for us, and we'll put it actually in the... Uh... No, but each person can save it to their computer. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, directly. I did not know. I learned all kinds of new things today. I do a lot of work with Zoom, so... 
Yeah, you can you can uh, save the chat by clicking the little three meatballs in the chat window and click save chat. And then it'll save it to your computer and you get all the information. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Um, Has anybody ever used Zoom and put it onto a website like as part of a page for people to go talk to them or can you do that? Um, well, I, I, uh, I ask people, I have a system called a point lend, kind of like Calendly that will automatically set up a zoom call based on my calendar. So if somebody yeah. schedule wants to schedule a time with me, they can set up a zoom call. It will set up the zoom meeting and integrates with zoom and then creates a calendar event and sends it to them. And also, also puts a calendar in my event and Whoa. actually, yeah. So I think Calendly, Calendly does that as well. Uh, I'll show, I'll show you kind of. Uh, this is not a really, you can put it on your WordPress site, but it's not necessarily WordPress related. There is, yeah, I think, a, isn't a better option, Alex, to integrate your Zoom session into YouTube? I see a lot of that these days. Oh, yeah? A Zoom session's integrated into YouTube, and then there's that chat session, and everything that's on YouTube just goes on your on YouTube, and, you know, can be recalled later, including the chat sessions. Well, you see, the thing is, what what Alice was saying is, this this gentleman wants to have, like prospective clients or his clients, where he can talk to them through the website, his website. Yeah, well, so and I did not know how to give it to him. So, <laughs> well, yeah, so like the chat, yeah, I actually Facebook Messenger now has a feature for for WordPress. I have a plugin where you can install an integration with Facebook's Messenger system. So. I have actually had it installed for a while. They installed it on my test WordPress site, but it brings up a window. Um, I actually saw one of our, I think Kapil has it on his uh, website here. I think he doesn't want to have it like on Facebook and the whole world. He wants it just on his site where no, he can. I, I no, think no, no, what, Dale, the, what Dale's trying to do is something that, sorry, I've worked in the whole Skype area for years. Okay. So there's something that's, there's a something called WebRTC, which basically is APIs so that developers can link websites into voice and video conversations. I don't know the names of people who are actually doing that, uh, but um, the whole idea is exactly what you're looking for, is that uh, people can take advantage of the... Um, voice and video technology through APIs and set it up as having conversations straight on the website. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of companies have really taken advantage of that because I don't think mm. they realize what they can do. Yeah, but somebody has to sit there and wait for somebody to come in for a meeting. That's the issue, right? Well, that's what he well thinks it's sort of like sitting meeting. waiting for a chat session. Yes. Uh, no, it's a little different because uh, with a chat, you can you can carry a phone around and somebody opens up a chat and you can you can have multiple people be able to potentially look at that and then you can respond a video call. You have to kind of be there and answer the call. Otherwise, you know, you don't answer the call and then what's the point of it. Right. So, um, here yeah, I actually, uh, actually, I saw, I saw this installed on, on one of our friends here, Kapil, he's got it on his website for inventive cafe. You see this uh, chat window here. So this automatically knows that I'm logged into WordPress or sorry to uh, Facebook. It loads on the website. It kind of hovers here as this little window. And then I can like continue as myself here. And then I can start a session with Kapil and you can actually automate this chat window and create like a chat bot if you want. So I can say hi. Uh, and then Kapil will probably get this on his phone or wherever it is. And here he actually does an automatic response and provides some information here for how to uh, Get in touch with us. and so here I have some phone numbers here, um, and then um, and then hopefully if Kapil is there or whoever is there at Inventive oh, yeah. Cafe, they can do that. So this is integration of uh, if WordPress has this oh, Facebook Messenger. It's a Facebook anymore. Messenger plugin. Yeah, it's a, it's a chat. And plugin. on the left here it is WhatsApp. And then so what's, what, here's you a WhatsApp. Can on WhatsApp also. Yeah, here's a WhatsApp plugin, right? So you have to you can you can add what WhatsApp to your computer. And then I could actually do it as well like that. So those, those are two, but yes, there's video ones too. Like um, they're usually commercial, but zoom doesn't actually have that kind of zooms approach is not to 
instantiate real uh, sort of sessions off. Well, I mean, if you want to have a Zoom link publicly available on your site, you can have the, the PMI or the personal meeting, which is the same for every all the time. It's always running, basically. And if you are logged into Zoom, you could have it just sitting in the background logged in and somebody can click a Zoom me link on your website and join your meeting. Right. So there's no you don't yeah. have to do anything special for that. Right. You could just available and naked have a naked Zoom link on your website and, people, and you can just sit there and wait for people to call. This the thing that I was going to show is um, the way that I do appointments oh. on our website. I uh, I have like this. This is kind of like Calendly. This one is called the point link. It's a little different. You configure these different kinds of meetings, and then it actually connects your to your um, calendar, and it syncs and and you set up policies as to when you want people to be able to meet, and you give a bunch of choices. You can have like a, a one week at a time, or two weeks, or three weeks in advance. And so these are all slots that are available on my calendar. If somebody wants to choose one, they basically select that slot and then you they put in information in. I could actually charge for this if I want. They have integration with Stripe and you, and you can configure what data you collect on this form and you continue. Uh, and then um, see like it validates, make sure it actually provides your information. Um, and then you can put the agenda. You can, I, I customize which fields I'm actually collecting here. And then it and then it completes this booking, and once it does that, it puts it on my calendar and sends them and it sets up the Zoom meeting as well because it's integrated with Zoom. So that's how I actually schedule meetings with all my customers. And I have meetings in um, I have in thirty minute um, I have a free consultation. I have thirty minute web conferences, ninety minute. I have phone meetings and I have in person meetings. So you can and you can set up these meetings, these different meeting types. So Calendly and Appointlet are all both. They're agnostic of any kind of specific system. They're not necessarily related to WordPress. You can install this on any type of website, um, but these are all appointment booking systems that are similar to what was being asked for earlier by Amy, but they're, they're independent of WordPress. I, I, I'm not using WordPress for my site, so I don't use a WordPress plugin for that, but this works really good. It saves a lot of time because- I think that's what he's looking for. Is and I have not a clue. Well, and also, so, and also uh, you're, I noticed uh, Apricot, you're dealing with Wild Apricot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so would you mind it if sometime I contacted you for yeah, sure. I'll, your I'll, expertise? Okay, because absolutely, Dale. I've got a client, and then I have never done it. Something tells me I'm going to have to learn fast. Okay, or you can subcontract to us, and we'll Alex, uh, just oh, come on. <laughs> mark up our services. That's what I'd rather have you do. Sorry, Alex. Uh, just a question. Uh, have you used this WhatsApp plugin? Oh, well, Kapil has, sounds like. Okay. Uh, now, I do understand the messenger for the Facebook. Well, the other party should have a Facebook account. But with WhatsApp, this is linked with a number. So if someone sends me a message through this plugin, will I be able to know what's his number? Yeah, that's how WhatsApp works, isn't it? Kapil? Could you please repeat what are you saying? <clears throat> My question is like with the Messenger plugin, this is linked with the, uh, let's say, Facebook account, which if you have a Facebook account, that will be uh, showing like your Facebook profile. But with okay. the WhatsApp plugin, uh, this is linked with the, with the phone number. So what should I see as a phone number for someone to send me a message to this plugin on the website? Uh, it will simply appear as a normal WhatsApp message and you can, if you have a business account linked with your WordPress, oh sorry, WhatsApp, then you can also send a reply back to your customer. That Yeah, uh, but will I be able to know message. what's his number? Yeah, obviously. Okay, because if I go now to any website, uh, how it would they know just my an, number? It is just an API. Provided by the WhatsApp, web dot WhatsApp, to simply message the user to the phone. No, for, for me as as a user, not as uh, the owner of the website. For me as a yeah. user, it will be just a pop up where I can type my message and that's it. Where it will grab my number from? Yeah, yeah, it will grab your number. Without your number, it will not work. Oh, so part of the requirement is you have to put your number in order to send the message. 
Yeah, you must have a number, and that's how it must WhatsApp be works. registered on WhatsApp. Yeah, that's how that's how that's how WhatsApp works. It works based it works based on your phone number. That's how you register. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I think that I think that the, that link was asking you to install WhatsApp on your computer, but then how to um you still have to log in, and then I think when you log in, it create it connects you to your phone number. Yeah, I guess you have to be maybe a login to the. <clears throat> web whatsapp in order for this to work like so it will be authenticated uh, yeah. the mobile. idea of the, of the whatsapp icon is mainly for when you're on mobile uh, and people people with whatsapp will uh you know logically click on that because they they know they recognize the, the logo the icon they click on it and they have whatsapp installed on their on their device and then they just send you a message Yep. Here, so here I'm here I'm doing this on my uh, on Kapil's website. I clicked on, I clicked yeah, but on. Yeah, do it on your mobile. Yeah, yeah. I click. Well, I clicked on this on my desktop. It opened up this link. Right. So it, it just wants you to yeah. connect your number. Yeah. So it, wa it, op it wants me to open up WhatsApp on my phone, and then it's it says to click menu. No, no. Yeah, which, so you which have which to scan this code, and then you then it connects your phone to your desktop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but for mobile, I guess you are already logged in, so you don't need to. You will not see that option. Yeah, if you're logged, if if your desktop and phone are connected, you won't yes. see that screen. It will just yeah. go on to the chat. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So how okay. do I? So how do I? Do I do it like open, that? Open WhatsApp on your phone. Yeah, I'm doing that. Okay. And go to uh, settings, and then uh, click on WhatsApp what, and then it'll open. Your oh, WhatsApp web desktop. Yeah. Okay. It'll open it your is. camera, right? Oh, yeah, there it is, right? Look at that. Yeah. Well, now you can start the chat with uh, that website that you're on. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. So that unlocked my 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 WhatsApp portal into this account. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can use your desktop to to chat. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's the desktop. Uh, but I guess Dan, if you access this link from your mobile and your mobile already has yeah, it'll, it'll uh, WhatsApp, so. It's yeah, so it's directly you chat directly. Yeah, you, you chat start. directly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. That's a That's good. Cool. How did you install that, Kapil? Uh, what? How did you get the WhatsApp uh, icon installed here? Um, WhatsApp.com. Uh, when you search in the plugin, that WhatsApp plugin, then you get the many type plugin you can install anyone. Ah, so that's a WordPress plugin that does WhatsApp. That's a WordPress yeah. plugin, yeah. Cool. And what's that called? Uh, I don't remember exactly. Probably uh, there are like, yeah there are many you can use any of them, depending on what rating which, you which, which one of these is more effective for you, the Facebook one or the WhatsApp one? Which one do you get more support the from? The WhatsApp one. Really? Yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, because uh, our first target is Indian customers. Uh huh. So they prefer WhatsApp more. Uh, I said, well, WhatsApp is, is pretty big here as well. So, mm. so I clicked on the WhatsApp icon on my phone. And it actually didn't do anything. Mm. It actually just went to the web, the, the website for WhatsApp. Yeah, you can uh, scan the QR code of your WhatsApp web in your phone. It will open. Uh, no, actually. Um, here, I'm going to show you what happens on my phone. Maybe it's because I'm not, I'm in, I'm in the Google browser. But uh, you might, you probably want to, you, you probably want to know that, that this is happening. That's that's what I was expecting. I thought it was just going to open up to WhatsApp directly, but I was I was actually trying this on my. I'm going to start on my phone in a second. These kind of uh, it, these kind of calls to actions are actually quite interesting, because they actually could be quite. It could could be really good to convert somebody. They have a question yeah, about yeah. something. Yeah, it provides okay. a good conver conversion yeah. rate for your website. Definitely, but um, like we cannot have a twenty-four hour chat support. We can have a bot only, so customer can send his query on WhatsApp or Facebook, whichever he like. Yeah, so it here is, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what happens here. I don't know if you're aware of that. This is what's happening here. Um, hang on one second. I'm gonna I'm gonna. I'm going to screen mirror and I'm going to share my phone so you can see what's actually going on on your website. So this is my, uh, this is my phone right now. Okay. 
So I had Safari up. I just want to see what, see, see this website. When I click on this thing, it actually opens up a browser window. It doesn't go into WhatsApp. It just does that. I would expect it just to go to WhatsApp and open up a message from my, I have WhatsApp installed. That's normal behavior usually. Oh, you know what? I have a, I, I have WhatsApp business installed. I don't have a WhatsApp installed. Maybe that's why. No, but you do have, you, you synced it. Didn't you sync it? Yeah, I did, but this is WhatsApp. I, I, it looks like it re requires a WhatsApp messenger app. Oh, the regular client. The regular client. And I, I have uh, the WhatsApp business client, which is this one, WA business. This oh, one. Yeah. yeah, because I think you are opening this as, as a user. So normally I think it's switched to the regular one. But as a business owner or the website owner, it goes to your business WhatsApp. Well, I would expect like this will probably open up my Facebook Messenger, I imagine. Yeah. See, this is opening up my Messenger so I can start doing that. And it opens up in a browser, but it still works. Whereas this one, oops. My daughter was doing stuff in here. But the, but the WhatsApp looks like it requires the uh, the regular app. Not and it doesn't It doesn't work with the, uh, the business app. It basically asks me to install, but I'm sure if I installed this, it'll probably open it right up. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Um, sorry for the diversion there. Did you guys know you can share your phone from Zoom as well? No. You that can. was going to be my question. And I also noticed your uh, battery is very low. Oh, that's true. Sorry. Oh, wait a minute. I did try to use Zoom on my phone, but I didn't, I didnn't quite copy. I did saw a Zoom plugin and then you screen share. You do screen mirroring over your over your network, and it it broadcasts your phone uh, screen into. I plugged it in for you, John. So you, when you share a screen, there's a phone iPhone iPad icon. And you click share, and it gives you instructions on your screen. It says connect to Wi-Fi network, and then you uh, tap screen mirroring in your settings, and it'll set up a a device on your network called Zoom dash your name, and then once you do that you're basically sharing your phone or your iPad instead of your computer. Whatever I do here basically is, um, is on my phone being shared. Yep. You can do that too. You can do that too with zoom. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. It is some 50. We have about 40 minutes left. Uh, did I miss any questions? after uh yeah i think i've got one here from jp jp do you want to ask your questions oh you said you used to make your posts seo friendly but now i just try to make my posts human friendly yeah why don't you, can you talk about that jp that's a good com that's a good comment what do you mean by that well um uh, I don't worry about uh, making the blog posts um, SEO friendly, like focusing on the keywords and stuff, like making it search engine friendly, just like making it like a regular uh, article or something that's catchy for a human uh, reader. You know what I mean? Oh, sorry. <laughs> or you mean like, when you say catchy, you mean like useful for a, a person as opposed to a computer, right? Yeah, something like, or something like uh, catchy for the reader, readers, uh, catch the reader's attention, like the title, uh, stuff like that, but not really like for SEO, uh, for crawlers. Uh, attention. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I agree with you. Like, I think that a lot of people focus on somehow trying to game the system, you know? They think that like, if you do some, a bunch of technical stuff to your post correctly, then somehow your post will be number one in the results for any search. That's simply not true. First of all, your post will be on the first page of Google for two reasons. One, uh, under two circumstances. One is that the search term that was used matches very closely what you wrote about, period. So that, and remember, you, you, may have wrote a, you, you may have written a thousand words or 500 words or, or 10,000 words and something. And the question was probably three words. And so those three words have to somehow match 
three words or, or the intent of what is in your content. It's very hard to do to, to do that. So things like, for example, a company name will match your company name if you're the only company name that's there. So that's one, one way to make, to make the match. The second is what most people don't focus on and when they call search engine optimize is inbound links. So that means your content has to be linked to by other organizations. If your content is not linked to by anyone else, you might as well not be on the internet because you don't have any backlinks and Google will not prioritize your page because it basically thinks that you're not really part of the conversation in a sense that you are kind of going at it alone and nobody is referring to your content and giving you inbound links. So because you don't have inbound links, so if you don't have inbound links from other reputable websites, and reputable being important word, you can't just create backlinks and fool Google into saying you have a lot of backlinks because they'll just punish you for that. That's used to be the thing that people would do. They create backlinks, all of a sudden your site is number one. Well, that doesn't work anymore. But it hasn't worked for a long time. Even though people still think they still sell that, they still think it works, but <laughs> eventually it doesn't work. But so it's, it's content and backlinks. So let me just show you guys a little bit of analysis I've done. This is a little bit of not really SEO, but I've created some, some Google Analytics for our website. And I have like a report that shows me my inbound social media referrals. And these are actually, that's a percentage of how many is coming from social media to our website versus how many is not. So, you know, 14% of traffic uh, so far this year has come from um, social media, right? And, and then I break out um, what overall referrals are. And so you can see that in most cases, a lot of people get a lot of traffic from Google. Well, that's because you have content and most people have at least half their traffic from Google. How much traffic is a different story, but at least they get traffic. But you, you'll notice that I have 20% that's direct, meaning people just clicking links without a referral. But take a look here. I have 9.8% on Facebook and I don't advertise on Facebook. So how does facebook.com yield almost 10% of my traffic to my site? And by, by the way, to be sure, to be sure, um, I'm not, am I sharing this? Yeah. Uh, to be sure, um, Last, if I go and look at this traffic last year, I wasn't doing, I don't think I was actually had as much. Let me just take a look and see, I don't remember. But I only had 7% last year. And if I go to 2018, this is my Google Analytics traffic. If I go to 2018 and look at that, it'd probably be even less than 7% uh, uh, on Facebook. And I don't, I'm, not, I'm not advertising on Facebook. I want to show you 2018, but it didn't take. Let me just do that. 2018. Just looking at a year's worth of traffic. So that was 7.2% in 2019. Yeah, it's about roughly the same as But in 2020, I actually uh, <clears throat> increased that quite a bit, and I increased my overall traffic. So, so the question is, how did I how did I do that? Well, I found Facebook groups that are, and Dale asked me about Wild Apricot. Facebook groups that um, actually this, this, I've been doing this for several years now that are targeted towards wild apricot customers. And so I have, and I participate in those groups. They have four or 5,000 wild apricot customers. So I was highly focused backlinks. Basically I talk about my content. I talk, I give support and answers and I link to my website on Facebook. And so be, as a result, I'm getting traffic on Facebook. Um, so this is a really, really powerful uh, mechanism to drive traffic to your website. So you ask questions like, well, why, am, why, am I, why is my website going down in traffic? Well, it's probably because you don't have high quality backlinks being, uh, being clicked on. Alex, uh, I think I read somewhere that uh, links that's coming from social media are usually no follow links. So it's not do follow. Oh, so that means that they're not tracked as referrals? No, no, it's just bring traffic and that's it but it doesn't count within the category of backlinks like but the, okay but backlinks but without you know oh, the, the, oh the, yeah the, yeah yeah, yeah follow and no follow yeah i got you no you're, yeah. you're right so they're not probably yeah no but that, i don't care about that my point is i don't care about that yeah i don't care that it's not google these are google friendly backlinks i don't i want people friendly backlinks yeah. meaning that i want a person that reads my content on facebook to click to my site i don't care yeah. that they didn't find it through google in fact you know, think about it this way. Let me just, let me see, like, by the way, in 2016, I only had 
six percent, uh, no, five percent on Google, so on Facebook. So I, over the years, I've I've doubled my uh, my my as a share of, and I've increased my traffic. So I've actually has a lot. I, I, in fact, beginning of the year when I was more active on Facebook, I had more time. I had I would add, I was this number was like fifteen percent of my traffic was coming from Facebook, and now I see other things like here's my wild apricot referral. So two point three percent is for this year is coming from the referral da- database of partners on wild apricot. So the, that is a, a, a follow link. That's a search engine optimized link. And so this, uh, and these are my newsletter links, which are no follow, but these are all various inbound links. So this breakout, you got to increase the variety and diversity of the inbound links to your website. Not necessarily backlinks that are follow links, meaning that they're search engine friendly, but just general referral traffic. That's what some, that's how you drive traffic. And it shows up directly in your f- traffic. So I haven't done anything to search engine optimize my site from day one, going back five years. I haven't installed any Yoast plugins. I haven't analyzed my, tr- my link traffic. I haven't done any of that. I haven't, all, but you can see because I continuously promote my site in various channels. <laughs> I'll have to mute mute all of you except me. Uh, <laughs> um, and then, uh, so that's the, so you can see there's an increase in traffic over time that continues to uh, that continues to rise. So, um, and I'm you know I'm consistently driving more traffic, and I don't really care that Google is changing the algorithm because my focus is not getting more Google link, Google search strings. My Google, my, my, my focus is getting more high quality links from potential customers. So I'm not really chasing the Google traffic, which is great if I get me, but the reality is that if I look at my search dashboard from search console, that my search is really on my company name and a couple of uh, blog posts that are good, but it's very rare that people are searching and finding me in Google as a customer, but those other places, they are actually more high quality. So that's my spiel on, um, on uh, what is actually happening from a search engine optimization perspective. It's like, so it's, you're chasing kind of a dream of like being number one on Google where really to JP's point, you should be chasing high quality content that's human friendly and placing it and distributing it in places where your potential customers are ready to click on your stuff and talk to you. So I had to mute everybody because there was somebody who had a phone ringing and I didn't know who it was, but do you have anything to add? Feel free to unmute and uh... You can try marketing on Quora website. You can get a good traffic from Quora. From Quora, yeah, that's another, yeah, absolutely. Sure. There are, there's a lot of- And a you lot can of publish stuff. some of your articles on medium.com. Yeah, those are all distribution. Those are all mm-hmm. places to distribute. I have a, I have a, uh, I created a, a scenario in the product called Integromat that's, that selects my most popular articles and I place into all my social media like Twitter and Facebook page and LinkedIn. Every three, four hours, I place some of my popular articles there and, and that's a way to just continue feeding those, uh, those places. And yeah, absolutely. If you wanna, if you, if, if, you, if you really started really getting good at publishing content to where, you're essentially going to where your customers are. You're not trying to drive them through Google you're kind of putting yourself yeah. out in places where you expect them to be. But, but like I really focus on really focusing where those customers are, finding out where your potential customers actually hang out. And, and, and frankly, Facebook, in terms of um, some of the business to consumer type and even business to business type stuff, just the sheer amount of people and the concentrated nature of some of the Facebook groups that are there. I, I haven't found a better medium for, for really like starting conversations with potential new customers. I was surprised myself actually how effective it was. But uh, Alex, uh, uh, some businesses, like some websites, they don't have that regular content update to keep adding new blogs or like it's just a basic uh, online websites where they just provide what services they they give them. Um, like just a basic stuff. So those type of people or those type of businesses, they they don't have something regularly to be uh, posted somewhere else. Uh, 
to show people like there is a kind of a new concept. So those are, those are kind of sites where you present somebody in real life or on a billboard or, or maybe you advertise and then you drive traffic so that they can complete some kind of a, some kind of a of call to action of some sort, right? Otherwise, yeah. it's just a business card, really a fancy business card, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, like that's really what most, most websites are. But I, I'll have to say that if you think that your website is a fancy business card is going to drive business in and of itself, meaning like it will actually create opportunities. When people find you, they'll actually convert to a lead. It's usually, unless you actually created your site to do that, that's, not, that's usually not the case. And so met new customers that will find your site simply be, they will find maybe because of the name so like for example like think about like plumbers and or or for like landscape architects or the, there's people that go on like on home stars they have a website but really what they do is they put themselves on websites like home stars or jiffy and and when people need something they go to those websites uh not not the plumber's website they go to the particular websites i need the service and that I'm forming, like I'm calling a call to action. And then I get people responding because they're monitoring those systems. And those systems have been developed to connect the customer to the buyer. It's much, and to, to be honest with you, in, investing in time and optimizing your ranking in a site like Homestars, if you're a plumber, is much better than, in, in, as, than investing time in building your own website that's fancy and sharing stuff. You could do that too to gain your, rep your reputation but like even just putting a nice Facebook page and like I'm, I'm in Facebook groups here in Vaughn where people say, I need a plumber. And then people will respond with 20 different Facebook pages. They're not even linking to the website. They're just linking to the Facebook page and saying, here's a person because all you need is a contact information. So like the, the value of a website and kind of what you do with it really does depend on your objectives and kind of how you find customers. It's really, it's tricky. I, I uh, used to live up north and uh, I ended up doing one for a gentleman who does log homes. He repairs, he also builds, whatever. So he's out in nowhere, Ontario and trying, so imagine, so we do a website and what we decided to do is um, I noticed all the others were like very impressive websites about the log homes they built. My goodness. And what we decided to do was, and my idea was let's get just personal and so I made the website rather much more personal than all the others. And it went through the roof because I think everybody was so used to being sold. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, yeah, but you know, the, this thing is what made me like they were good. He was good and very excellent. And, uh, but yeah, but even on the contact page, we put a thing, a, a little note from him saying, if I don't, if you don't hear back from me in another day or two, it's because I'm working on a project and we don't have any access. Because some of those log homes, you don't have a phone, you don't got nothing. So, and we put that in there, like, you know, and it had his first thing. And, and, and that, luckily one of his, one of his clients made this most amazing uh, slideshow video thing. It was wonderful. And it was done when, when they were working on her place. And this is going to, a lot of guys are here. So anyways, I said to him, <clears throat> and don't make it all just for guy stuff. Because that's fine. The guy says, come and check my house. And that's fine. You get out there. And then he goes in and says to his wife, honey, what do you think? <laughs> and if she doesn't like you, forget it. You don't got the job. <laughs> and he laughed at me at the beginning when I said that. I said, I know, because I deal with a lot of people out in the country with all these homes, getting them repaired. So, but he went along with me that, okay. And so we kept a lot of the stuff that a little more for that the ladies might like, right? And the one time, one, one spring when everybody wanted their stuff done, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how he was going to get all of it done. He had so many people. They, he, they just went crazy. They found his site and went nuts. Huh. So, you, you, made it, you made it human friendly. You didn't, this is yeah. why I think, I think that this message continues to get lost in all the noise. Yeah. Of, which is... If you make something funny, friendly, you can use videos if you have it, which believe it or not, do work. Uh, yep. They may not be viewed by anyone, but if you have somebody that's made a nice video, it does resonate with customers that look at it. If it's human friendly, that's worth more than have being search engine optimized to the, to the hilt. Um, and I think that to some extent, some of the plugins in WordPress do a disservice. They give you a false sense of security. So like Yoast, for example, there's this plugin called Yoast that everybody installs. 
and it shows you all these red lights and green lights and how you should and, and it's whatever it says is not it's not that it's incorrect it does make for a better content if you write towards an eighth or ninth grade level reading level it is better <laughs> like it, it 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 does all it does give you suggestions on how you not to screw up stuff but in and of itself if you just do all that stuff and you think okay now everybody's gonna come beating the door to my website that's just not true. Like Yoast is not going to go and create those backlinks for you. Quality backlinks. It, Yoast is not going to post stuff on social media and, uh, and, and encourage other people to retweet it. That's all up to you to actually kind of make your site if it's a business site. And if it's a personal site, like I'll give you an example. One of the, one of the most popular blog posts on my, um, on our website, cause we've got like, um, Top blog posts of all time. I have a report, and um, uh, up until very recently, although now it's I have another post that's the most popular. I wrote this one in October of 2016. So let me just show you this. This posts guests on average uh, 132. It's been around for 43 months now on my website, and on average it gets 132 sessions per month. That means 132 people come to my website per month on average over, over the last almost four years clicking on, this web, clicking on this link. What is this link that's so interesting? Well, this link is an article I wrote on how to get free access to lynda.com and Safari books with a valid library card. Because libraries have access to these amazing learning services for free. So I wrote about this and I, I explained what these things are. These are, you can find this stuff all over the place. It's owned by, Linda's now owned by LinkedIn now. So it's been around forever and Safari books. And you can, and I have a couple of links, searching libraries with Linda and searching libraries with Safari. And I created a list of libraries that have it, but it's not really there. But anyway, this short little article right here gets accessed 132 times on average per month. Will wow. I take it? Will I take it down? No, hell no. It has nothing to do with the kind of service we provide. I mean, it's just a little bit about training, but this is the kind of content that's very human friendly because it, I inform people that they may have not been, they may have not realized that they can get these services that are actually quite expensive services, but they can get them with their library card for free to, to learn new stuff. And people do search this. This <clears throat> is one of those search terms that in fact is, um, uh, one of the things that comes up on my search dashboard, uh, you see Safari books online, free access. I get 19 clicks, um, uh, and 131 impressions just for this through the search console. I don't think, I actually don't think this is correct exactly because this is, uh, or maybe I've, I've, over this period, it's, it's more, but, but I, oh no, there's a bunch of other ones. Safari books online. Yeah. So there's a bunch of different way, different ways to get this access. So, that's an example of, of an interesting blog post that is informative, but uh, what happens is I'm hoping that after they read this, maybe they'll read some other parts of my website. And so these, these really interesting web posts that generate a lot of traffic, I optimize for this. I optimize for content that continues to generate traffic on an ongoing basis. And I don't care if Google likes it or not. I wanna see if the stuff that I write if it over time, it continues to generate content. Now I have a lot of content on my site. See, I have 198 posts on here that generate almost nothing. Like see, the, it goes really like after the first page, these are an average nine sessions per month, but I would say 150 articles generate less than 10 sessions per month, which means that I wrote them and I did them, but honestly, they probably don't necessarily resonate with the audience. And so as a result, most of the content you're going to write is not really going to generate a lot of con a lot of clicks, but if you don't write any content, uh, then this will never be additive to your traffic. And, and I could, I should say to you that the reason why I break up these, this is my blog traffic at the, the dark green and my pages that are not blogs are light green. You could see that my traffic for my blog dwarfs not, not dwarfs, but sometimes it's almost twice the amount of, regular page traffic. So imagine if I removed all the blog traffic off my site, I would basically eliminate more than half, actually way more than half of the traffic to my website. You can see that on a monthly basis, in some cases, I get two blog sessions for every one visit to one of my pages in October here. So this, 
this dark green is a non-trivial amount of added traffic to my site without which I don't think I would have been be able to generate the traffic that I do nor the customers that I do. Um, yeah, Jim says Linda now is LinkedIn learning. Yep, that's what it's called, but I like calling it lynda.com because I'm like that. I have, I have a, I, I call it by LinkedIn, but I don't want to remove the Linda doc because a lot of people still know it by lynda.com. So I could put LinkedIn learning in, in the blog post, but I think still people still search it by lynda.com, not LinkedIn learning. Cause that brand is much better than LinkedIn learning. Um, so um, yeah, so that's a little bit on the SEO thing. I know you probably didn't ask for any, but. You just have- helped me with a client. What's that? You just helped with a client that's writing and actually going to put a library research library on his website. Oh. So in links and that sort of stuff. And he's, you know, very creative, you know, the type. Yeah, sure. <laughs> very creative with all this. So, and it's very new to me. And it's, and of course the topic has to do with financial. Yeah. It's quite into this financial stuff and the way things and people and the banking. Oh gosh. It's going to be so much fun doing this. <laughs> Hear you. Anybody have any other questions? We have about um, 15 minutes left in our meetup. I think I'm out of the ones that have been posted, unless I've missed something. I don't have a question so much as a comment uh, based on what you were just talking about. Google, uh, you know, they used to uh, look at uh, words that might be right in your URL. And I have a pers- perfect example of that. Back in 1996, I got the uh, website or the domain uh, <clears throat> levelplayingfield.com for a book that I wrote. And um, that worked all, all right for quite a while. And uh, it used to come up number one on Google. And um, then I just let it go. And uh, it wasn't even up on uh, the web web for, I don't know, five, 10 years. And I started it uh, maybe five, six years ago, maybe eight years ago. But, uh, and I've done a few blog articles, but there's no activity back and forth, no social um, uh, networking to it. And uh, I just, as you were talking, I just did a Google search on levelplayingfield.com or just level playing field. And uh, it didn't even come up. Uh, Levelplayingfield.ca came up, which is a uh, uh, an outfit in uh, Calgary for, uh, um, handicapped uh, entrance ways into uh, buildings and that sort of thing. But uh, my site never even shows up. So uh, it's, uh, Google's not even uh, uh, putting the URL name into the search, I guess, anymore. So uh, it just goes to what you were saying. You really need to uh, get traffic in other ways. Well, I mean, your your domain levelplayingfield.com. Oh yeah, there's... Actually, you have, yeah, you have something there. You have domain for sale there. You have, yeah, that's right. That That's correct. I mean, that you, you, there's not re. I mean, there, I mean, there is a book review there, but it's just not, it isn't, it's not, you're not feeding it in any way, meaning that it's not necessarily um, considered by Google as a match for this particular phrase. This is actually a phrase, a, a level, level playing field. And so you can see the kind of results they give you. I'm actually do- doing a Bing search, which is similar to Google. So, you know, they'll show you a book on Amazon, which is an ad. Then they'll show you an actual picture of a level, a level playing field. Uh, and then it has uh, like the accessibility consulting agency and it has the Wikipedia entry. And that's so, all like your, your stuff doesn't rank anymore because you're competing with the, the, the term level playing field to some extent. Uh, and, and you're competing with, um, yeah. So now if you were to be a world renowned author for a book called level playing field, what's that? um, it might come up on the first page. Maybe. Well, I, I am the author of the level playing field, but no, I understand, but it's just, but well, so then it's like, like Amazon is paying for people to actually go to that <clears throat> book, I guess on Amazon. Is that you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People can buy it on Amazon and stuff. Okay, so there's... I guess there's no interaction back and forth to the website that would give it a ranking or anything. Right, there's no, there's, it's not, doesn't have as, as well, the backlinks aren't there. Um, There is, uh, yeah, there's enough competition there. And and honestly, 
you know, to be perfectly honest, like, let me, let me, like, let's just look at this example of, of what, what a first page looks like on Bing. Google would be very similar. Take a look at what's actually happening here. When people say, I want to be on the first page of something, look at everything you have to compete with. You've got an ad from Amazon. You got this Wikipedia entry for the term level playing field. You've got pictures, the idioms, you got all these other things. You've got, these guys have done an amazing job to get in here because they're competing with all this other stuff. So somehow they, you know, they, they're there so people could find them and if they wade through all this other stuff, but there's everything else is about you know, all this other stuff. Like, let me show you like the same thing for my company. I, I, you think that if you search my company name, you would bring up my company. Well, no, you get an ad. There's my company right here's I posted this information in, uh, in actually I didn't post it in, in Bing. I posted it in Google, but, and then here's a couple of links and then here's a link to our own network. And then you've got, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fairly well optimized now, thank goodness. But here I get these guys mail and phone calls sometimes a completely separate service called new path it has nothing <laughs> to do with what we do, but I get that sometimes. Uh, and then I'll get, here's another ad and I'll get, you know, a bunch of other stuff. So this is pretty good. Like, cause I'm, cause I'm actively sort of, if, if somebody looks up this word, New Path Consulting, I want them to find me. I don't want to be like buried on page three, but I have to compete against quite a bit of other stuff, even so. Oh, sure. You know what I mean? Like I, so getting on first page of Google used to be actually quite simple if you had a keyword, but now really even companies like Yelp complain about like certain restaurants, like, yeah, I have a restaurant that we ordered from recently here called Bombay Touch. Well, you see, they come up first link. That's great because they, you know, they've been around for a while and they actually, but here's another one that's the same name and I'm not sure if that's the same place. And then you've got all these other ones. And so it's almost impossible to tell, you know, which is what, but, but, but here's a, I mean, these guys have done a good job. Some other restaurants have not. You know, they, you can't find them on Google even if you try. So that's why they go to places like Yelp where they have their advertisement and hopefully, but I know that Yelp was complaining, this company Yelp that had an app, they were complaining that Google was just basically pushing them out of search results. They were pushing their stuff above others. So here's an example of where they're, they probably had an edge at one point and then Google just decided to change something. And so you can't play by Google's rules. Like you just can't <coughs> depend on Google driving traffic. You've got to find other ways of getting traffic to your website beyond Google because yeah. it's, it's not well, it really doesn't good. matter to me so much anymore other than that it was just an interesting observation from what you were saying and that things have changed over the years. I've just been retired for so long and doing so much traveling and I just don't care anymore. So, you know, yeah. but it, 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 um, it goes exactly to what you were saying. So Maria is asking me how to ask the recording all over once, once we're finished with this session, all of our recordings are available on WPToronto.com. So you'll see a recap once we get uh, the recording digitized and uploaded to Vimeo. You'll see a recap like this. Robin does a wonderful job of, uh, thank you, Robin, for here's the video of last uh, month's recording. And he does a recap and, and takes some of the notes and, and puts information here about what we've talked about. We had a fairly free ranging discussion. We didn't fix too many sites today, but. Um, <laughs> But uh, we had kind of a different conversation today. And then there's a chat transcript that we upload up here as well so that people can see what, what we talked about. So that's how you get access to the, um, to the, 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 um, the uh, video recordings of our, of our call. And so we have May up here, April and March. Those are the last three that we've done. Yep. You're welcome, Maria. Um, thank you for uh, your help. Uh, Ali Reza is putting his uh, his uh, LinkedIn profile here. If you guys want to share your the last few minutes, if you want to share your websites, and I'll bring them up on my screen, and we'll take a look at people. Here's uh, uh, Ali Reza. He is a front end developer, <laughs> and he is. Uh, uh, you want to talk a little bit about what you're looking for? You're looking for some work or contracts? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm looking for some full-time roles here. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, I'm working as a contractor with a company called Sigma Loyalty Group. 
I'm a, a React developer here. So I've been in this industry for almost six years. I have designed and developed the front end of the of different websites in uh, let's say news broadcasting industry and also uh, uh, machineries, uh, lifestyles, like different sort of websites. Yeah, that's cool. it. Come out to more of our meetings and contribute <clears throat> to answering questions. And uh, I am sure that uh, some, some one, one day somebody will come by, then uh, uh, they'll, uh, you have a very particular kind of skill sets, right? So it's, uh, uh, in some ways, a little bit beyond what the WordPress community is, but you never know. Um, yeah, you know, WordPress, I mean, I, I have developed websites, customized content management systems, but for people, like for uh, medium-sized businesses, I, I always recommend WordPress. Yeah, they always what? I always recommend WordPress. Oh yeah, for sure. It's a great, it's a great solution for that. Yeah, it's a great solution. And also it is, you know, being supported with a, with a really large community. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a huge community. One of the biggest, they, they recently had WordPress, Word, Word uh, Camp Europe recently. And there were some interesting sessions on there. They had it completely virtually so you can actually watch everything. Um, online um they have all the all the sessions there uh, so they're going to have a, a, a wordcamp us is i think also being done that way online just like what we're doing now except it's all i think it's all day they have sessions um anyone else want to plug their organization or website while we're at it or themselves Oh, okay. What kind of Denver's coming up? Yeah. Um, oh, here we go. So this is uh, uh, Leslie here, self-employed graphic designer. Let me bring this up. This is X height media. Uh, cool. So that is uh, Leslie uh, there. Thank you, Leslie. And there's Kai's. I guess I can say I've done websites for almost oh, 15 more years. I started when I was up north before people even knew what a website was. So you, <laughs> do, you, do, you a, do you have a URL, Dale? Done by Dale. Done by com. Dale. Yeah, well, that's okay. I had a client said, if you don't get your website done by Dale, you'd be done in by somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> here's a, here's a Nicole. Uh, we'll, we'll put done by Dale in a second here. <laughs> hey, Nicole. You've been, you've, been, you've, been, you've been quiet. I have been quiet. <laughs> uh, but it's a really good session. Thank you. Learned a lot. That's good. As always. <laughs> So Nicole is doing supernova sites. We dream, we dare, we deliver. Cool. Yeah, I like it. I uh, started up the company in January. No, oh, congratulations. Uh, yeah, I studied graphic design and um, I also worked in nonprofit fundraising for a long time. So mm -hmm. I just combined the two and I'm specializing now for that, for those uh, organizations. So what sort of services do you provide? Websites, but uh, focused on fundraising. Um, advocacy basically tailoring the website to uh a nonprofit. cool they need. Yeah. that's a cool piece of content top five flat slack communities in in, in toronto yeah um, that got um a lot of hits well, that's interesting design x community look at that mars e101 slack cool email co-founder slack community online geniuses wow the wordpress slack community yeah this is a big one that one has a lot of users on there. Yeah, yeah cool. pretty active on Slack. Are you? Yeah, uh, we run all our, our whole business on Slack with all our clients. Okay. We invite all our clients into, into private Slack channels, and we don't do we don't do support by email. We we communicate on projects directly through Slack. So. Yeah, I gotta find out about Slack. 
Black is a, yeah, it's a cool system here. I'll just quickly, quickly show you. more this. work when I come here. You know that. This, this, this is Slack. So basically, these are our various channels where I have converse, private conversations. These are our customers that we're discussing. Our customers are in here. And we have conversations with our subcontractors. And, uh, and, and so these are the various Slack uh, workspaces. These are some, uh, I, I like when our, my partner companies have their own Slacks. So you can have conversations. It's like a private Facebook kind of system, I guess. But oh. kind of like a chat system, a project management a little bit. It's kind of weird to describe what it actually is. No, but, it's, I, but it's like a I, chat system, basically. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's it's based on IRC internet relay chat. But you can have an app on your phone. You can have an app on the, on the web browser. You can have a, a regular Windows app. So oh. it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. So these communities are open communities, I guess you can join. And communicate with people and it's like a uh, um, yeah it's pretty cool actually didn't realize there were these open slack communities it's neat you should continue building this uh, Nicole yeah it just takes work the blogging oh yeah no, you <laughs> continue continue ident identifying type slack communities yeah I have a few more to add so I might do it edit it later cool and then you you wanted to also share Nicole NicoleShark.com. This is your art. So I'll bring that up. Okay. And this is, oh, Nicole Hart. I'm sorry. Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole C. Hart. Okay, I got you. Uh, cool. And there's your, okay, cool. Very nice. Yeah, so you, this is a very nice graphic design site. You can have a lot of content here. Yeah, so if somebody needs some graphics done, please uh, get in touch with Nicole. It looks really nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else we got? We got JP is running a tech blog, jponline.net. Oh, cool. There you go. Lots of articles here about releases. This looks like a fairly lots of uh, content here. It's cool. Are you using the newspaper theme, JP? I'm sorry. What's that again? Are you using the tag div newspaper theme? Oh no, it's um, it's a different theme, premium theme. It's called Paper from uh, Theme Forest. Okay. This looks a little bit like. One I've used in another project, but yeah, cool. Uh, cool. Um, all right, guys. Well, it's eight thirty. Thank you for joining. Um, so we will we will finish up here, and I'll stop the recording. And uh, we will have our next meetup in July. Uh, let me just see here when this is. Usually, it's the third Tuesday. Yeah, the 21st of July, that'll be our next meeting and it'll most likely be virtual again. So if you want, please put your question on meetup.com uh, and uh, uh, we'll address it that way. And if you have any other questions, feel free to post it on the, uh, the, uh, the meetup. Uh, we'll link back to the WordPress Toronto for reviews of this, of this uh, session of the video like i described and i look forward to seeing you again soon um and uh, uh I, I thank you for your time and i hope you stay healthy and uh, keep safe and uh keep positive through all this time and hopefully we'll be be in person with our meetings again sometime soon okay thank you everybody Hey, Robin. I haven't seen you in so long. Right.